Mr. Wu, Chief of the Republic of China. Delighted to have you. No question. Why did you allow them to form that committee if you're not going to run? Uh, no question. How about Secretary Watson? Well, there seem to be questions, there'll be no answers. <laughs> Since he's going to be going over to the new committee. I was going to say, you're just changing hands. Just changing hands. <laughs> How do you do? I'm pleased to have you here. And Madame Shoshu. How do you do? Nice to see you. And these are the children. Hello there. Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Hello there. Nice to see you. You and I will go over there for a photo of the family. We will go over there for a photo of the family. And then we will go over there with the family. If you pass it in the chimney, it's fine. Nous venons d'organiser le programme et je crois que votre président viendra et que j'aurai l'occasion de le voir à l'occasion de son séjour, avant la fin du mois. Je suis, je suis très heureux de remercier le président Rigan pour avoir pu organiser cette visite et au nom de, de mon président de la République du peuple togolais, je voudrais le remercier et lui dire combien le gouvernement togolais, le peuple togolais aime le peuple américain. I'm very happy to have a chance to thank you, Mr. President, for organizing the schedule so that my president can come. I want to take this opportunity to tell you how much the people of Togo feel close and friendly to the people of the United States. Well, the feeling is mutual and we appreciate We appreciate their votes of support in the United Nations. Nous apprécions beaucoup votre vote aux Nations Unies à l'appui de notre position. Entre amis, je crois que tout ce qu'on peut faire. Among friends, you do what you can do to help your friends. Now I can ask you just a 
Czechoslovak Socialist Republic. Yes, how do you do, Mr. President? It's a great pleasure, an honor and privilege for me to meet you. Welcome. And daughter Ivana. Yeah. Yes. Son Martin. Yes. And son Peter. Hello. <laughs> well, you and I will move Excuse in front of the fireplace for a picture mm -hmm. and we'll have all of you. Thank you. President, it's a pleasure to meet Well, pleasure to meet you. And Mrs. Hussey. How do you do? You and I will go over in front of the fireplace for a photo, and then you will join us after we've taken one. Good. We appreciate the great hospitality and the wonderful your country's reception of Vice President Bush when he was there recently. Thank you very much. Thank you. They are very happy to be able to visit us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I think our relations have been improving on a good basis. I hope that you will continue. Mr. Bush, to be certain that our foreign minister has been doing this recently. So that Thank you. Well, welcome to the United States. I hope you're safe. Thank you so much, Mr. President. We should be all of us. Ambassador of the Federated Republic of Brazil. How do you do, Mr. President? 
actually have to see the last one of the lot. It's a great pleasure to see you. And Madame Correa de Casa. How do you do? Thank you. Very nice. It's nice to meet you. It's a pleasure to be with you. And Assistant Secretary Mr. Kilday, Mr. President. Mr. President. Mr. President. Mr. President. Mr. Mr. President, how are you? Nice to see you, sir. Nice to see you. You and I will go over in front of the fireplace for a picture, and then uh, you will join us after. Well, we had a wonderful visit to your country <laughs> last year. We appreciated it very much. And we we're so pleased that the president's recovery is seems to be State of the country, and I want to thank you for your support. And on behalf of all the young people who, the young leaders that you've uh, helped us touch, uh, we have something that we'd like to present to you. We'd like Mr. Anderson to uh, do the honors. Mr. President, on behalf of the Hugh O'Brien Youth Foundation, I would like to present you with the Albert Schweitzer Award. It reads, if you permit me, presented to Ronald Reagan. 40th, Vice, 40th President of the United States for inspired service and dedication to the youth of his nation. Well, you, Bob, thank you very much. I'm very proud to receive that award, except that I think I should be giving it to you for 25 years of dedication to the young people of this country. And I know that I join a rather distinguished band who have received these yes. awards. I've told the Hobie Foundation uh, before about how the work that you do with these high school sophomores enhances their understanding of our free enterprise system, our democratic process. And I want to express my appreciation also for the many business concerns that organizations like ARCO uh, that have contributed so much to, to make this possible. I am deeply grateful and and honored and to all the people that I know are uh, going to be seeing this uh, at the 25th anniversary dinner of the Hugh O'Brien Foundation. And, uh, I'm grateful to all of you, and particularly for all that you're doing. Thank you very much, Steve. Appreciate you uh, giving us the honor of presenting it. Uh, my honor. It's a wonderful way to put your arms around tomorrow. He has done a great job. Trailer, delighted to have you received this honor. Thank you very much. You're on her ass. 
<laughs> oh, mine's smaller than yours. I can't tell how loud I'm Give us a second. I must have, because I have to tell you that the first few days that I was wearing this thing, finally, and then some of the fellows here in the office said, we've been thinking we were going to have to get one to hear you from now on. And I didn't, because it sounded to me as if I was talking normally. But evidently, I was talking very softly once I had this in. Oh, we're correct. Listen, do you have the same thing that I had? Of course, I'm just getting used to it. Yeah, well, it's the yeah. essence the conversation. Yeah, the yeah. Yeah. When you pick up on the outside. Oh, yeah. And I hate them. I really do. This is my turn. I know. You're doing the pain in the ear. This one allowed loud gunshot too. I don't know. Might have happened on the set. One of those shoot em up pictures years ago. And two of us were running, and then we were to turn in a tree and start firing back. And this actor who knew nothing about guns or anything put that 38 up right on my shoulder. Oh, my God. And shot. And you know, I actually staggered about four feet out to the side. I'm going to do that again. I'm going to get that. Somebody gets a shotgun. Well, well, say, the, uh, Mr. President, I hate to interrupt you. Seven years. Yeah. You are late for that one moment. Another building. Yeah, seven years we did whatever. Well, 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 not only on the so called women's issues, but on a wide variety of other issues. So, this is that his responsibility is to respond together for common goals and not uh, focusing. group of Christians will be welcome here because you belong here. My <laughs> passion and responsibility. No greater truth shines through than the one you, God, who has blessed our land. And we don't have the answers. He does. <laughs> Very easy. Like you, she knew you could never repay one bad deed. But with some of us fear, we've tended to forget things like faith and American prayer. I pray that we won't lose that idea, and that's the Bible. recommended in friend of the court briefs. Now we're making another recommendation. And here you could say, tuition tax credits would only threaten public schools if you believe that more competition, greater parental choice, is that not God's decision to make? Yes. And isn't it our duty to serve even the least of these? I believe deeply for the unborn. Second Chronicles. If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and praise. The Supreme Court. I'm very concerned about the Supreme Court. Nine unelected officials with no expiration date rather than death legislating morality in this country. Abortion being the, the prime uh, topic. Could you address that, please? Well, legislating to the other side. In other her unborn child was killed. And the legislature of California, some years ago. Mr. Bunch, we have a couple of televised, well publicized, televised uh, portions on that will show what you have done for women in the United States. We think your record is fantastic. 
but the grassroots voter is not hearing it because the press is only giving them the feminist view. And we want everybody to hear the truth. Yes. And I, I think we need to have it right directly for you. Uh, it's a little bit unsettling, and I'd like to use that in um, armament and the resources of armament, more importantly, the resources of education, is um, resources of spirit. And I believe that if we have a, the right kind of military with the right strength, mm -hmm. they will never have <laughs> the records of more than two dozen mm -hmm. fine potential nominees for the position of Secretary of the Interior. I have decided to turn once again to someone who has been a troubleshooter and a result-oriented professional. So it is with a good deal of pleasure that I tell you that I have asked my assistant for national security affairs Judge Bill Clark to be my nominee for this cabinet position. He is a God-fearing Westerner, fourth-generation rancher, and a person I trust, and I think he will be a great secretary of the interior.